You are listening to the Standard Desk of News from the Standard Show, the podcast that brings you the stories behind the standards, with Matthew Childs and Cindy Parakil. Today's episode is for June 2023. One of the most favourite features of the regular episodes of The Standard Show is The Standards Desk of News. It's where we take a brief look at some of the news about standards and standards in the news. And in recognition of this favourite feature, we thought we'd do something about it and bring The Standards Desk of News out into the limelight. And so we've given it a regular monthly episode all of its own. You can find the links to this month's stories in the show notes. Hey, Cindy Parakil. Hey, Matthew Charles. Well, shall we have the Standards Desk of News? <laughs> yep, let's do it. Yes, this is the Standards Desk of News. News about standards and standards in the news. This time for June 2023. Yes, and we start with new guidelines for a digital future. We do. In June, regulatory leaders from around the world agreed on a new set of guidelines to secure what they described as an inclusive and sustainable digital future for all. The best practice guidelines were adopted at the International Telecommunication Union's Global Symposium for Regulators, or GSR, which took place in Egypt. Well, Matthew, we should say the International Telecommunication Union, or ITU, is the United Nations Specialized Agency for Information and Communication Technologies. Founded way back in 1865, it allocates global radio spectrum and satellite orbits. It develops the technical standards that ensure networks and technologies seamlessly interconnect. So every time you make a call from your smartphone, access the internet, or send an email, you are benefiting from the work of the ITU. You are indeed, and even having this conversation between you and I, Cindy. (laughs) Now, since 2003, the GSR best practice guidelines have captured the established regulatory principles for making sure there is a competitive, safe and inclusive telecommunications environment. In order to advance universal and meaningful connectivity for everyone, the 2023 GSR guidelines focus on the regulatory approaches needed for rural, unserved and underserved areas, as well as emerging technologies. Also during GSR 23, country reviews were published for Brazil, Colombia, Egypt and Kenya. The reviews provided a real practical direction for achieving digital transformation in those countries. Well, from developing digital policies to preventing plastic pollution. Indeed. Plastic pollution is a growing global problem, one which negatively affects human health and livelihoods, as well as the climate and ecosystems. There are approximately 7 billion tonnes of unrecycled plastic in the world today, in landfills, oceans, rivers and in the biosphere. Plastic debris is currently the most abundant type of litter in our oceans, and the amount of it is expected to double within the next 15 years. So, in response, ISO has published a new guide on how standards can address the issue of plastic pollution. The guide highlights the many standards that are relevant in this fight, and they cover almost the whole life cycle of plastics. These include ISO 14009, guidelines for incorporating material circulation in design and development, ISO 18602 for packaging and the environment, and ISO 5412, compostable shopping bags, alongside many, many more. The key thing here is that as the global community comes together to develop multilateral solutions to prevent plastic pollution, international standards can provide useful tools to help turn commitment into action. Now, from plastic pollution to product safety. Yes, the European standards bodies SEN and SENLEC are backing the EU Product Safety Award, organised by the European Commission. The award celebrates innovative business initiatives and research that increases the safety of consumers. The award was launched in 2019 to provide recognition and visibility to companies that put consumer safety at the heart of their business. It also aims to raise consumer awareness around product safety and encourage more informed buying choices. 
This year, the award focuses on business initiatives that specifically make a difference for teenagers. The judges are looking for products or initiatives aiming to increase the safety of teenagers that go beyond the requirements of EU law and standards. And finally, it's 120 years of the kite mark. Woohoo! <laughs> Yes, the BSI Kite Mark is a symbol of innovation, security, quality, and safety. And this year, it's celebrating its 120th birthday. Woohoo, indeed, <laughs> Cindy Parakel. Now, originally known as the British Standard Mark, the BSI Kite Mark was first registered as a trademark for tramway rails in June 1903. Standardization reduced the number of rail sizes from 75 down to 5. Since then, the kite mark has grown into one of Britain's most important and well-recognised consumer quality marks. Now, the name kite mark came from the kite-based shape of the mark's design. The mark comprises of three letters, a B on its back with an S placed inside, a V underneath. These represent the words British, Standard and Verification. Evolving over the years, the kite mark now represents more than just product quality. Kite marks are now available for a wide range of processes and services. Things like innovation management, digital banking and inclusive service. Talking of which, a bit of a plug here, the inclusive service kite mark is the subject of a new five-part series from The Standard Show, exploring why organisations are using it. You can find all of those episodes in the podcast feed. Have a listen. Well, thank you, Cindy Parakil. Thank you, Matthew Childs. For June 2023, that's the Standards Desk of News. You have been listening to the Standards Desk of News from The Standard Show. Subscribe to The Standard Show now, wherever you get your podcasts. You just heard a stripped media production.